is up, my ninjas. I'm finally back with a G.I. Joe review. And today, we are taking a look at the dreaded G.I. Joe Retaliation Cobra Troopers. I had a realization with these guys not too long ago. They are pretty much some of what I have been preaching when I was talking about making cheaper troops. This would be a good way to do it, and I'm going to get into it. But, uh... You know, if, when we first heard about them, we were like, ugh, really? We're taking away articulation, blah, 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 you know? But then when I got them in hand, because I bought these first, I think I bought about six of them for my son, my older son. And then as we played together, I was like, huh, there's little things that are worth getting a couple of these to add to my, you know, my Cobra battalions, <laughs> my various Cobra battalions. But, you know, this is one of those things you're gonna have to inspect them a little bit further to see all the, the awesomeness that is this actual uh, figure. But I'm gonna get into the good, the bad, and the ugly, and you know, everything in between. So sit back, relax, and uh, let's do it. So the sculpt, it's a very simple sculpt. It's almost like they're wearing sneaking suits with web gear that has these huge canisters, which I think are, uh, either some kind of ammunition for their futuristic guns. They're not exactly the same size as the canisters that are sticking off the end or, or the under the hand guard for trigger guard for the uh, gun. Uh, their gun, I'll get into a little bit, but it's a pretty nice gun, well sculpted, nice details. You'll see that there are two different sets of guns with these guys, and I'll get into that a little bit more. But from their helmets to the visors, it's a more completely uh, faceless look, you know what I mean? So you can't be like, we need brown ones, we need Asian ones, and we need whatever. Nope, it could be anybody under these things. Which is awesome because essentially that is what Cobra is all about. It's a faceless organization in many ways because they move into any place, any country that has a weak infrastructure, build it up from the inside with their own people, and then they take over and turn it into a superpower. So to have these kinds of uh, you know troops where you can't tell who they are underneath, this is a perfect design. And I'm not sure if this is a concept design because it seems like it, um, but I don't know. But as I was saying with the gun, it looks like it's a flamethrower laser rifle combination. Or maybe it's just a laser rifle and that piece sticking out is a battery. And the ones on their web gear must be smaller ones. But as you can see, the build is similar to the build of, uh, and I'm talking like articulation and, you know, the, the type of sculpting is similar to the first wave retaliation Duke, which I use as infantry for Fenris Company. They have this kind of simplistic, you know, armor on the chest and the torso, and then everything else is free with straps, and then they have their gloves, and... They have really nice range, uh, a really nice range of motion, I'm sorry, uh, on their uh, upper body, on their arms, so they can shoulder a rifle perfectly, look down the scope, look down the length of the rifle like a pro, which is all you need. And then their legs are where you lose articulation and they're kind of stiff, and I'm going to get into that right now. So this might just be articulation or it might be a problem for some folks, and it was initially for me when I heard it and I wrote them off, but in practice, it's not that terrible of a thing. Especially since these guys aren't like main characters or anything. Um, and they stand really well. I don't have any problem standing them. But as you can see, there is zero articulation in the ankles. Zero. Not a swivel, not a pivot, nothing. And it's kind of crazy because you would think that uh, they would actually try to, you know, sneak something in there, but nothing, <laughs> not a thing. They don't even have double jointed knees. Um, I thought that was going to be a point of contention for me, but they have pretty awesome 90 degree um, articular or 90 degree range of movement in their knee. So they can actually take a knee and it's not a problem. So. I wasn't too uh, pissed off about this detail because on paper it sounds bad, but in practice they did everything you would need to do to circumvent that lack of articulation being a problem. 
So, you know, this is kind of a prop. I give him props for that. Okay, so this guy is kind of light on accessories. He pretty much just comes with what you see here, which is the uh, parachute, the buckles and straps for the uh, harness, I mean, for the parachute, his assault rifle, his pistol, the web gear, and the helmet. And the pistol is removable. My point of contention with them is where's the stand at? A lot of the retaliation figures didn't come with stands, and I know I pointed some of this out when I did more retaliation reviews during that time period, but they could have easily just given us the Cobra Trooper stand from the 25th anniversary like I did. I got these from a bunch of friends on the uh, uh, Joe community back in the day. They didn't want their uh, stands. They didn't use the stands, so they gave them to me. But uh, I don't know what's up with that. It makes the release kind of feel cheap. As for the harness and the parachute, it's very well done. It's actually my favorite part of this set. Now, I don't know if this particular accessory is specific to, it, it, does it find its origins, I should say, in this line, in retaliation, or was it used on something years prior, and then they just, you know, dug it up out of storage and made it part of this. But anyway, it adds a nice little play feature to this figure. And I always, I'm finding out that I really do dig paratroopers, and I didn't really realize it before. Um, ODC has been collecting Joes, and he's been putting together all these teams, and then I've been going back and looking at the figures I have, and the ones I have the most fun with, a lot of them happen to be paratroopers. So um, this right here adds to your, you know, your, your, your play patterns with your various uh, Joe Troopers. The harness itself is pretty big, so it fits over the web gear, so it's easy to put onto your figure. The parachute is dope because anyone who grew up in the 80s and you saw G.I. Joe the movie, you remember the parachutes kind of looked like this. So it's a pretty dope idea. I think there was even a uh, convention where they gave away some stealth Cobra Troopers that had these parachutes. So it's really well done and it works. So, you know, props to them for that. The harness itself is held together by like a clip system, and it's almost reminiscent, I should say, of the actual uh, clip system that they use with uh, real parachutes. The difference is there's more latches and such, but you just clip the bigger piece with the ropes onto the uh, completely rubber blue pieces that extend off of the harness. And you're you're all set and it connects really well and it's sturdy and until I pull it off for the most part it stays who to thunk it this with a cheapo Cobra Trooper you know what I mean it's it's really strange um, the assault rifle I thought and I'm and I kind of stick with this when I play I always think that this gun is a flamethrower and it's a laser rifle it's possible that canister could be a battery, and uh, that's what they have on their uh, chests, or that could be gas for the flamethrower. I guess it's up to you, you know? I uh, wanted to have variety, so I have, uh, I gave some of them XMAs, so that, uh, XM8s, Jesus, uh, so that uh, you could have different types of soldiers and you wouldn't just have the same look over and over you have your flame troopers and then you have your just assault you know troopers and i like this look it, it looks good the gun itself you've seen it in so many sci-fi films that it just fits with you know this kind of aesthetic so uh yeah it fit perfectly for them so that's what i use with them the pistol uh it's the same beretta ish you know uh usp ish looking pistol that we got with most of the Rise of Cobra figures, and well, we got a couple of them in Rise of Cobra, but we got a lot of them in Retaliation. So, you know, it's standard. It's a little chunky pistol. Fits really good in most holsters, and a lot of times the figures that have holsters were given the really skinny Deagle. Um, you could use this instead, and it will fit perfectly, and you don't have to worry about that. I like it. And one thing I had pointed out earlier is that his range of motion in his shoulders and his arms allow for the proper, you know, holding of 
various weapons, you know, assault rifles and pistols as well. Helmet is removable. He looks pretty damn cool without the helmet. I thought at first that they just used a snake eyes head. And there, it's very possible that there is a snake eyes that this is the head for, and they just repainted it. And it looks good. You know, it, it looks good enough to be its own thing. The whole concept of them, you know, being so faceless. I like it. it. It's a shame they didn't use this in the film because it would be easier for you to have extras because you could have 10 guys and then you could just interchange, you know, your costumes without worrying or interchange actors that are the same size or whatever the size of the costume without worrying too much about you know, their identities. But I, I love it. I love the way this looks. It's just a really good... Uh, now, one thing I always tend to do with figures that are part of, you know, they're in succession in a line of other figures that are similar, I uh, like to compare them. So here's my comparison between the Cobra Troopers. I've got three different types of Cobra Troopers, as well as the Cobra Viper. Now, you already know he's going to be completely different from the Viper, but I just figured, you know, because there's in Pursuit of Cobra, and retaliation and 30th and 50th there's a lot of reuse of some of those parts i figured let me just throw them all together these are the troops that you can probably see the most in a, a, a gi joe operation so uh looking at him you know he's standard size he looks like part of the team and i like that it's very subtle because you know there's only a few cobra symbols on the character but it looks, the silhouette is that of your regular Cobra Trooper. It's pretty clever. It looks like a Cobra Trooper, so from far away you would be like, okay, it's just a Trooper. I mean, he is just a Cobra Trooper, so if Retaliation had followed this model, like the actual film, I think it would have been better than the weird Cobra Special Forces that don't look like Cobra Troopers. You know, they don't look like classic Cobra Troopers. We've yet to see that. So, I don't know. And now we've come to the bottom line. There's, there's a lot to like about this, this figure, and it was only a, a, upon second, a secondary closer inspection. After playing with my son and seeing, you know, using them and seeing the parts, you know, when I play with them, I'm like, huh, these guys aren't that bad. There's little things, you know, the arm, the hands don't stay in very well sometimes, so you're gonna have to, do the whole uh, clear nail polish thing with those. Um, the uh, helmets, if you don't put stick tack in them, they're gonna fall off. But that's most G.I. Joe helmets since 25th anniversary. Uh, the design overall is pretty badass. I did not compare him to the Ultimate Duke Joe Trooper because I think that figure is way too badass to be fighting this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It almost feels like that Joe Trooper should be fighting the uh, Cobra Special Forces. But these guys, there's a little bit of character there, a lot of uh, good design. And uh, with the right weapons, you can make them look more badass. I mean, you've seen a lot of my other troops, and I like to have, you know, a sniper, a heavy machine gunner, a uh, point man, you know, um, and then have two support crew members who have either smaller weapons or larger weapons that are smaller than the heavy machine gunner so that they can, you know, back up the point man, the heavy machine gunner can lay down fire, etc., etc. So it's all up to you how you want to play with them and what you want to arm them with. The weapons they come with are kind of evil looking on their own. So, you know, you can you can put them in a lot of situations that are fitting of evil foot soldiers of the Cobra Empire, you know? And I, I dig that, I dig that. It's what I want in my troopers. And the fact that they have a cheaper build with less articulation, it doesn't bother me because they're the troops. I don't need my troops to do that much. You need to be able to take a knee, aim your gun and look down the sights, call it a day. If you can't do that, then, I mean, we have a problem. These guys can clearly do that. I don't have any problems with them. So I think all in all, these guys are a win. I, uh, I'm surprised to some degree that they're that awesome. And I'm also surprised that I had to go back and look at them to come across all these 
good points to tell you guys about so that it could possibly uh, change the way you see these figures because they're it's not they're not terrible figures. It, at first it felt like they were trying to skimp us and that this was going to become the model you know forward going forward and that was that was the reason for my reaction. These are not the top of the line, they're not the best, but they will stand up to play, which is good. And they look good when you have a little squad of them. So, you know, I say get four, no more than six. Just integrate them into your Cobra Army and you'll be really happy. Um, you can see them with a, a hiss from Retaliation. I actually love these Retaliation hisses, not only because they were on clearance, so they were like, I think I paid eight bucks for the two that, eight a piece for the two that I have. And uh, I was gonna get more, I mean, you see them on eBay for so much these days, and it's kind of like, eh, they shouldn't be any more than 10 bucks because they were on clearance for like a good two years, you know? So, I don't know, these guys are good. They're a win. If you want to quickly army build and get a bunch of uh, troopers, look for these guys. They go for pretty cheap on uh, the secondary market. So anyway, I am Strida. That is my story, and I'm sticking to it. These guys are some really awesome figures. They're really easy to army build. They don't go for that much on the secondary market, and I think you'll have fun with them. Uh, I have way more Joe videos on the way, and uh, a lot of other videos on the way too. So thank you always for watching and sticking with me this long. And uh, that's it for me. You guys have been great. Peace outside.